So you got to figure with all these challenges, one of them was going to get through. Uh, because it's uh, so many states have, have challenges to saying that Donald Trump shouldn't be on the ballot because of the insurrection, which dates back uh, to the Civil War. And the insurrection, the crazy thing is, has not been charged by even Jack Smith, the most aggressive yeah. prosecutor maybe in the world, well, who's fresh off a stint at The Hague, who's known for overcharging. He was unable to find it out in the indictment. At the very least, even if he did get charged with insurrection, where's the due process? He's not been convicted of anything, so you, let's preemptively knock him off. If you read the, the opinion, though, they use the January 6th documents and the report there as a basis yeah. for this. Yeah. And, of course, Donald Trump's team in the middle of this said, look, how can you use this when there was really no Republicans on there? And the two Republicans that were on there didn't like me. And the court says we found it to be credible. We thought that it was a fair report. Um, but, of course, there was no one there to challenge the point of view. But it goes back to your your point, Brian. The president was in charge. So if he hasn't been charged, how do you use this as a basis? Well, you know, I think part of it is goes to the very core of, of what they're suggesting, because they're using uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment that disqualifies people uh, who engage in an insurrection against the Constitution. Here's the thing. Uh, this has never been determined before. This is essentially a novel legal and constitutional question. There's no clear precedent for it, because the question is, does... Section 3, apply to the presidency. Mm -hmm. If you look at Section 3, it lists several offices, but it does not list the presidency because the president's oath is different. And so that essentially, this could be really easy for the U.S. Supreme Court, which, of course, now does tilt heavily to the conservative side. But that particular part of the law that they are citing does not pertain you know, in a, in a 100 percent way to the presidency. Yeah, yeah, so that, it would be easy for them to kick it out. Yeah, absolutely. That part remains an open question. And we spoke to a great guest last hour and asked if uh, if he thought that uh, Donald Trump incited an insurrection and if Section three would pertain to this case. And he said that has to do that. That was written post civil war. And so really what they're doing is talking about you know, raising armies and blood in the streets. And does what Donald Trump did and what the January 6th rioters did, does that compare to uh, the Confederacy rising up against the government uh, during the Civil War? Uh, this was a three to four uh, ruling. So uh, four justices voted in favor of this ruling, three against. Each one of them gave their own different dissenting opinion. I just want to read one of them. Um, this is from uh, Supreme Colorado Supreme Court Justice Carlos Samor. He said, because most other states don't have the election code provision we do, that in turn will inevitably right. lead to the disqualification of President Trump from the presidential primary ballot in less than all 50 states, thereby risking chaos in the country. This can't possibly be the outcome the framers intended. And of those three dissenting justices, they all dissented on procedural grounds. It, they all agreed. Uh, and they essentially said the Supreme Court of Colorado was overstepping its authority. So just, next stop, just Supreme to, Court. Just to put a button on it, um, I hope they know they're making Donald Trump's case. He said that the legal system, that there's a two-tier justice system, that they're trying to take people's votes away. And they're essentially doing it. 